So I've spoken at length about the dominant role and the submissive role and the dynamic between the two. But in the realm of BDSM, you do not need to be a dominant in either personality or action, or a submissive in either personality or action, to participate in BDSM, or the activities therein. Um, I'm going to refer again to Screw the Roses, Send Me the Thorns, uh, as it has a much more concise and um, procedural definition of what I'm going to get into in this video. Uh, I have, like in the last video, tried to record this about four times already. Not 13, but four, and I keep losing my place trying to ramble on without a guidebook. So, here is the definitions, so much as they are, of top and bottom. This is one of the areas where SM terminology is used to mean so many different things that the terms seem to take on a life of their own. Hang on, we're about to take a roller coaster ride. Some contend that top and bottom are simply synonyms for dominant and submissive, respectively. Others say top is not necessarily dominant at all. He is merely providing the beatings for a masochist who is not necessarily submissive at all. This is a little confusing, not too hard to understand, but we're just getting started. In actual practice, a masochist may top, a verb, for another masochist who is, at the time, being referred to as a bottom, a noun. Our own preference is to call someone who likes to be beaten, but doesn't get off on being submissive to another's will, a bottom. Anyone who is willing to provide such a beating, regardless of whether they are sadists, dominants, submissives, or other bottoms, we call a top. So, again, this is sort of uh, indicative of the nebulous nature of BDSM, its terminology, and the way in which the roles involved can uh, evolve or shift from one person to another. Uh, maybe you just like being spanked. You don't have a submissive personality. You're not someone who feels at all turned on by giving over power to any other activity. Maybe you just like being spanked. And so, for the sake of a scene or an encounter with someone, you are the bottom. And someone providing the spankings, for the sake of functionality, is the top. And that's as far as it goes. Uh, BDSM does not require people to be lifetime, psychological, power exchange, really serious relationship kind of deals. Uh, there are people that go to sex clubs simply to be a bottom for the night, or to be a top. Maybe somebody just likes using a paddle, or a whip, or tying somebody up, and someone likes to be tied up. Then the person doing the tying is the top, and the person being tied up is the bottom. There's no relationship. There's no power exchange so much. There's just a mm, utility each person is fulfilling for the other. And that's fine. I was at a conference one time long, long ago in relation to my college club where there was a dominant there, an obvious dominant, uh, a gentleman who was uh, dressed with... Um, you know, a, a ring of keys on the side of his pants and his uh, submissive, he had two submissives with him, uh, younger girls, and they were, you know, dressed to the nines in their leather and such. And he spoke at length in absolute terms as to what it meant to be a dominant or what it meant to be a submissive. Sort of like uh, the Sith <laughs> in Star Wars if you're speaking in absolutes about BDSM, then you're not speaking truthfully about BDSM. Uh, there are only, in my opinion, uh, three notions that should overarch all of BDSM-type activity. And that is there. It is safe, it is sane, and it is consensual. Aside from those very abstract notions, everything that occurs that adheres to those three things is BDSM. If it's off the beaten path and it gets you horny, then you can consider it BDSM. If it's fetish, if it's power exchange, if it's naughty, 
whatever, so long as it is safe and sane and consensual. So going back to the book on tops and bottoms, briefly. In scene speak, switches are both people and things. And what does that mean exactly? Well, uh, firstly, almost everyone has heard of the switch that is a thing. Usually made from willow, ash, or birch, it whistles appallingly on its approach and stings like a backslap on a sunburn when it finds what it is looking for. So a switch, for the sake of BDSM, could be just, you know, like a cane or a stick or anything that you're using to sort of induce pain on your bottom or your submissive, depending on the cir circumstances. Uh, then there's the second definition. The switch that is a person plays both the dominant and submissive sides of the SM game. Seemingly, this guy has the best of both worlds. Often he is paired with another switch. This puts him in a peculiar position. So yeah, switch is someone who is not uh, psychologically or preferentially uh, dominant or submissive. It's just somebody who likes to play in whatever role, utility, or aspect that involves. And again, even though this seems to fly in the face of the classic notion of BDSM where you have the dominant and the submissive, it too is perfectly legitimate. The thing about finding your role is as much a journey as trying to find out you know, what you want to do with your life or what makes you happy. Uh, when you decide to explore your sexuality in this way, uh, and if you have never done so before, you're going to find out things that are completely new to you, that you never even considered before. And the thing to remember, and the thing that I've mentioned previous to this, is that there's no wrong way to do it. There are some people that will try to tell you that this is the correct way to be a dominant, or this is the correct way to be a submissive. And, you know, to a certain extent, I have done that myself on these videos. But again, I'm just giving you my perspective. So long as whatever you are doing is safe, sane, and consensual, it's good as long as you're having fun. As long as you and your partner, or maybe just you by yourself, are enjoying yourselves. And maybe you're a dominant. Maybe you're a hardcore, psychological, dominant person. Or maybe you're a person that craves control, and you turn into a dominant, or find a way to become one in the bedroom. Maybe you're naturally submissive, and you want to be someone who pleases another. Or maybe you're naturally in control of everything, and you crave release, and look for that submissive opportunity. Or maybe you're just someone that likes to be spanked. Or maybe you're just someone that likes to tie someone up. There's something exhilarating about that process. But aside from that, you don't have any psychological or desperate need to be in control of someone else. Or some kind of need to be in release to someone else's power. Whatever makes you happy, whatever feels good, is fine. As long as it's safe. As long as it's sane. As long as it's consensual. And I know I'm saying that like a mantra, and I don't mean to start sounding cultish, but it is important because, as I've mentioned before, when you're participating in activities like this, there's a psychological aspect to it, as well as a physical one. If you're the dominant, if you're the top, and even if you're the submissive or the bottom, you are putting either your own or someone else's safety in your hands. And it is important that in the course of this activity, that everyone is having fun and everyone feels safe. There is a sense of danger. Danger and the notion of surprise or pain can be a turn-on. And people outside of this lifestyle probably can't quite grasp what is fun about fear or what is enjoyable about pain. That's okay. They don't have to. And conversely, if you like those things, you don't have to feel weird about it. You don't have to explain it to everyone you come across, but you can have it be your own. It's yours. Your experience, your pleasure, what you like to have happen, what you like to do. 
These are all okay, as long as you're being safe, as long as you're being sane, and as long as it's all consensual. So whether you're a top, or a bottom, or a dominant, or a submissive, or you like to move between the two as a switch, or maybe you just like to watch. (laughs) Maybe you don't like to do any of it. Maybe you just like to watch other people do it, and that makes you happy. That's fine, too. So that's my summary of tops and bottoms, uh, and switches as well, and my repetition of the three guidelines for activity in BDSM, as I repeated far too often probably, but I think it is very important, especially in this day and age where Fifty Shades of Grey can give a very skewed notion of what is healthy or safe activity between two uh, participants in BDSM. I appreciate all of the feedback I've gotten from you guys. Uh, I'm amazed at the uh, um, support that this channel's received so far. Uh, And again, if any questions come up, if there's any topics you'd like to see me cover, um, don't hesitate to either uh, tweet me or put a comment in the comments below, and I will see what I can do. As always, thank you for listening.